Welcome everyone, inshallah. Just to confirm, I just sent in the chat uh, the verse that I'm going to start with. So today we'll start from Surah Tawbah, Juz 11, from Ayah 124. <coughs> and after a few verses, I will start Surah Yunus. Surah Yunus, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا ما أنزلت سورة فمنهم من يقول فمنهم من يقول أيكم زادت هذه إيمانا فأما الذين آمنوا فزادتهم إيمانا وهم يستبشرون وأما الذين في قلوبهم مرض فزادتهم رجسا إلى رجسهم وماتوا وهم كافرون أولا يرون أنهم يفتنون في كل عام مرة أو مرتين ثم لا يتوبون ولا هم يذكرون وإذا ما أنزلت سورة نظر بعضهم إلى بعض هل يراكم من أحد؟ هل يراكم من أحد ثم صرفوا صرف الله قلوبهم بأنهم قوم لا يفقهون لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز علي ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لا تلك آيات الكتاب الحكيم أكان للناس عجبا أن أوحينا إلى رجل منهم أن أنذر الناس وبشر الذين آمنوا أن لهم قدم صدق عند ربهم قال الكافرون إن هذا لساحر مبين إن ربكم الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض إن الله إن ربكم الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يدبر الأمر ما من شفيع إلا من بعد إذنه ذلكم الله ربكم فاعبدوه أفلا تذكرون إليه مرجعكم جميعا وعد الله حقا إنه يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده 
ليجزي الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات بالقسط والذين كفروا لهم شراب من حميم وعذاب أليم بما كانوا يكفرون هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا وقدره منازل لتعلموا عدد السنين والحساب ما خلق الله ذلك إلا بالحق يفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون إن في اختلاف الليل والنهار وما خلق الله وما خلق الله في السماوات والأرض لآيات لقوم يتقون إن الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا ورضوا بالحياة الدنيا واطمأنوا بها والذين هم عن آياتنا غافلون أولئك مأواهم النار بما كانوا يكسبون إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات يهديهم ربهم بإيمانهم تجري من تحتهم الأنهار في جنات النعيم دعواهم فيها سبحانك دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعواهم وآخر دعواهم وآخر دعواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم So I just would like to mention something in Surah Tawbah it's the only surah that doesn't have doesn't, doesn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim So in total, as Brother Tariq said last time, we have 114 basmalas, including Surah An-Naml. And whether you start in the middle from Surah Tawbah, you never start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today I forgot and I start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim from the middle of Surah Tawbah. I apologize. Thank you. Jazakullah, Kariyanas. Over to you, Imam Tawbah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا. I want to share with you today the story of one of the great Sahaba, Khuzayma ibn Thabit رضي الله عنه. سيدنا خزيمة was one of the early Sahaba, and he fought in the battle of he fought in the battle of Bedr, and he fought in all of the prophets' uh, battles عليه الصلاة والسلام. until he was martyred in the Battle of Safin when he fought with Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now Khuzayma, we don't hear much about him, but you will understand why I mention him tonight. Sidna Khuzayma, he was a steadfast Sahabi. He, was, he is what we would call today a stand-up guy. He was somebody that everyone could rely on. Anything that the Prophet alayhi salatu salam told him, he he inculcated, he took in his heart, and he held it, and he lived with that for the rest of his life. One day when the Prophet ﷺ was traveling and he came back to Medina, before he entered into the vicinity of Medina, he found a shepherd who had some livestock, and he decided that he wanted to buy some of his livestock. So he transacted the money, and then the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, I'll collect the cattle, I'll collect the livestock. When I enter into Medina, you know, the man is traveling a little bit slow because he has the animals. So the Prophet ﷺ continued on to Medina. The shepherd 
with the livestock that has now been sold to the Prophet ﷺ. He was traveling, and then he found somebody else who wanted to buy the livestock. So he said, yeah, why not? So he sold the livestock again, the livestock that was already sold to the Prophet ﷺ. So when the man came into the vicinity of Medina, the Prophet ﷺ went to collect his property. And then this is where the conflict ensued. And the Prophet said, but I bought this from you. And, you know, I, I bought it for this much, this much, etc. Seeing this dispute was Sayyidina Khuzayma. Sayyidina Khuzayma, he came and he stood next to the Prophet He said, I bear witness that the Prophet bought this from you. And you have to pay him back. Or you have to deliver the livestock from him. And the second sale is invalid. Now, of course, when we have issues of transaction, like this is an issue of transaction, we require two witnesses. So the Prophet Sallallahu this happened, you know, outside of the city when he was by himself. And Khuzayma came to his assistance, only Khuzayma. So the Prophet Sallallahu he turns to him, he said, what do, you, what, do you, what do you know about this sale? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I believe you, that you bring revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I follow this revelation. You think I'm not going to believe you when you buy some, uh, some cattle? So the Prophet Sallallahu was so overtaken with joy and happiness that he said, Khuzayma, your witness is enough. Meaning if Khuzayma ever has to bear witness, it's enough. And because of this incident, Sayyidina Khuzayma radiallahu anhu, he was known as Du Shahadatayn. He was known as the one whose witness counts as two. And in the biographies of the companions, many of the companions, they have these you know, nicknames. So this was his nickname. Now why on earth am I telling you this story? Why is this important? Fast forward now into the Khilafah of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The Prophet Sallallahu has now passed. Sayyidina Abu Bakr is the Khalifa. And there was this movement amongst Sayyidina Abu Bakr, this decision that he made, that he wanted to collect all of the Qur'an in one Mus'haf. Up until that time, the Qur'an was only memorized. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he talked to uh, Zayd radiallahu anhu, Zayd ibn Harith radiallahu anhu. And he said, Zayd, you are one of the learned people of the Qur'an. You know, you're one of the trusted Sahaba. I want you to uh, uh, initiate a committee for the collection of the Qur'an. So Sayyidina Zaid, he got together with some of the Sahaba and they put down certain conditions. How will they, what is the protocol that they will follow to begin to compile the Qur'an? So their protocol was that each verse has to be memorized, you know, in the heart. And we need two witnesses to bring us an actual piece of paper, an actual document that shows that this verse is written and that this verse comes after the last verse and comes before the next verse. So they, because at the time of the revelation of the Prophet ﷺ, the Qur'an was written down. The, many of the Sahaba would write the different verses on parchment, on bones, and things like that. But the entirety of the Qur'an was never collected until the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So Sayyidina Zayd, he had this committee, he made this announcement, and they started accepting all of these conditions. Until they finished the entire project, they were left with the last two verses of Surah at tawbah verses 128 and 129, etc., until the end of the surah. These two verses, they were memorized, everyone knew them, but they did not have two witnesses. The only witness that they had was Sayyidina Khuzayma radiallahu anhu. And because of Sayyidina Khuzayma's status and because the Prophet Sallallahu acknowledged that he was the one that could, his witnessing would be enough, would suffice, they accepted these two verses and these two verses were documented in the Mus'haf and we recite them, you know, and they will be recited inshallah till the final, final hour. So I mentioned the story for, for several reasons. One, because it's appropriate, because we are, uh, you know, listening to the conclusion of Surah At-Tawbah. And it is appropriate that we remember this story with these last two verses. So that's the occasion. But more importantly, it's important for us to remember that the Qur'an that we have is something that has been verified, is something that has been documented, is something that has been reviewed hundreds and thousands of times over the last 1400 years from the time of its initial revelation until the time that we have it now. There is no verse, there is no letter, there is no vowel, there is no chapter, there is nothing in the Qur'an that is missing, it is complete, it is sound, uh, there is no discrepancy between the masahif, 
There's no discrepancies amongst the sects of Islam, amongst the Sunnis and the Shias, etc. I mean, like Anas mentioned about the Tawbah not having the best Bismillah, some of the ulama say it's part of Surat Al-Anfal. I mean, there are differences like that, but there are no missing verses or extra verses or something like that. The Quran has been documented like no other document in human history. It has been preserved in its recitation. It has been preserved in its verses. And it has been preserved 10 times over because there are 10 recitations of the Quran, not just one recitation. That means each recitation of the Quran has its rules of pronunciation, has its rules of spelling, etc. So the Quran has been verified it, 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 so much, it's almost unimaginable how reliable, how much trust that we have in the Quran. We take it for granted. And this is the month of the Quran. So when we celebrate Ramadan, and we listen to the beautiful verses of the Quran and we talk about their meaning, let us also reflect and remember how the book actually came to us, the documentation, the effort that the Sahaba had in bringing this Quran to us over the past. And this should give us this uh, uh, trust and this confidence that when we open the Quran, you know, we are approaching something that is otherworldly. This is the eternal uncreated word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to us now as if it is being revealed at this moment to us. The other reason I wanted to mention Sayyidina Khuzayma radiallahu anhu and this story is I want us to imagine the type of character this person had, the type of traits that this person had, to be a person of such deep faith and conviction that when he saw this uh, episode of the Prophet sallallahu he easily came to his assistance because he knew that he could trust the Prophet وسلم, no matter what. This uh, makeup, this human being, this, this Sahabi, this great Sahabi, he lived his whole life and he, he, he witnessed all of these battles and he died as a Shaheed and all of these things. And his greatest gift to us, his greatest legacy to us is that he bore witness steadfast in memorizing these two verses you know, throughout his lifetime until it was the time came for that to be included in the Mus'haf. That is a reflection, a point of reflection for us. We should ask ourselves, what is our character like? How are we made? Are we honest? Are we not honest? Do we trust one another? What type of uh, allegiance do we have to our faith, to our brothers, to our sisters? Because this is what made up the Sahaba. It was this type of uh, belief unwavering belief that shook them to their foundation, that nothing could shake that belief out of them. Through difficulties, through good times, through bad times, they never ever wavered in their belief. Unfortunately for us, many times, the smallest you know, stone in the road can cause us to sort of give up, uh, you know, woe is me, why is God doing this to me, you know, that kind of thing. And our faith is very fickle. Our faith, faith sometimes is very thin. But we need to have deep faith. We have to have deep trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sign of this deep faith is its consistency throughout our life. You know, this is an incident that happened early on in the time of Medina. And it didn't, the benefit of that did not manifest until after the passing of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. When uh, Sayyidina Khuzayma was old, an older man now, and he was in the battle of Safin, one of the uh, companions saw him you know, saw this old man fighting, but, you know, he's, he had like, his face was like covered, you know, in, in battle, but they could see like there was a white beard protruding. And they said, you know, who is this old man fighting so fiercely? And he removed his covering. And they said, oh, you're, you know, Sayyidina Khuzayma, why are you doing this? He says, because I heard the Prophet Sallallahu tell me that whenever, uh, whoever fights Imam Ali, you fight with him against him. So again, he lived with these hadith, these verses that we, we say all the time, he lived them. He didn't just say, he didn't just pay them lip service, but they were internalized and they altered his character and he lived with them throughout his life. When you look at the history of the collection of the hadith, for example, there are many, many hadith, or only many sahaba rather, only narrated one or two hadith. That means they lived their entire life memorizing that one statement, living with that one statement being able to carry that on. And that one statement was enough for them. It was enough for them to be upright. It was enough for them to be content. It was enough for them to be happy. It was enough for them to be ethical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as we 
continue, uh, you know, this is a little digression from like the actual tafsir. I wanted to talk about this story because it's so interesting and so important. But let us also reflect on how these verses impact and change us. Ultimately, we want the Qur'an to penetrate our heart. We want it to alter our character for the better. And we want, us, we want the Qur'an to make us better, the best versions of ourselves. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you, Imam Tarek. Uh, over to Yanis. Tell Yanis. اللهم وأنت فاطر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون إلى هنا ثم نورك فهديت فلك الحمد عظم حلمك فغفرت فلك الحمد بسط يدك فأعطيت فلك الحمد وجهك أكرم الوجوه وجاهك أعظم الجاه وعطيتك أفضل العطية تطاع فتشكر وتعصى فتغفر وتجيب المضطر وتكشف الضر تشفي المرضى تشفي المرضى وتغفر الذنوب وتقبل توبتنا ولا يبلغ مدحك قول قائل اللهم لا تحرمنا من شهر رمضان اللهم لا تحرمنا من شهر رمضان اللهم أنت أحق من ذكر وأحق من عبد وأنصر من ابتغي وأرفأ من من ملك وأجود من سئل وأكرم من أعطى وأرحم من استرحم وأكفى من توكل عليه وأبر من أجاب أنت الملك لا شريك لك وأنت الفرد لا ند لك كل شيء هالك إلا وجهك لا تطاع إلا بإذنك ولا تعصى إلا بعلمك تطاع فتشكر وتعصى صاف تغفر أقرب شهيد وأدنى حفيظ حلت دون النفوس وأخذت بالنواصي وكتبت الآثار ونسخت الآجال القلوب لك مفضية والسر عندك علانية الحلال ما أحللت والحرام ما حرمت والدين ما شرعت والأمر ما قضيت والخلق خلقك والعبد عبدك وأمت الله وأمت الله وأنت الله الرؤوف التواب الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملك الأعلى إلى يوم الدين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله تمر أو يستطيع من سورة هود آية 6 جزء 12 إن شاء الله سورة هود آية 6 Thank you Anas Thank you Anas Tarek over to you Imam Tarek Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All praise and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask him to send his prayers and his blessings on our beloved messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah ta'ala to accept our fast and to accept our prayer and to accept our devotional works in this blessed month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to transform us by the recitation of the Qur'an. May we benefit from its recitation. May we live its meanings. And may the Qur'an be a guide for us in the hereafter, a guide to take us into the paradise, insha'Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering of this pandemic. We ask Allah ta'ala 
to protect our masjid, to protect our institutions and our schools. We ask Allah Ta'ala to have mercy on those who have passed before us. We ask Allah Ta'ala to protect and bless our parents and to protect and bless our children. May we all join together, inshallah, soon in the mosque safely, inshallah. Ameen, ameen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.